Hi, I'm George Pearson, and this is a Photoshop low poly art tutorial making this kind of interesting faceted look out of a photograph. There is the original, and there is the low poly version of that. Now, if you enjoy this video, make sure you click that like button and also subscribe to my channel. If you want to learn a lot more about Photoshop, check out my complete training, which you'll find on my website or you can also get it on Amazon and you'll find links for all of that in the description. Okay, let's get to it. This is one of those art techniques, this low poly technique here, that's easy to do in Photoshop, but it takes a bit of time. It's just a lot of just time spent to create all these little polygons, all these little triangles in here. But very, very easy. The concept is very easy as well. Let's go ahead and talk about the concept on this. I'm going to clear everything else out. Here's the original on the background layer. I'm going to take the background. This is how I always start. Take the background, drag it down to a new layer, just like that. Always work on a copy because this will be damaging the image, converting it to that low poly look. So you want to always be working on a copy and not on the original. So save your original, make a copy of your background, and use that to do your low poly effect. Now all you have to do is to make triangles and then blur those triangles out using a special blur tool. Let me show you how this is done. I'm just going to click in here on this wing. We'll do this one side. It takes far too long for this whole bird here. It would take me you know, a couple of hours. That's what I spent on the example up here, about two hours for the example. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to do this on this one wing. And we'll talk about the technique. Then it's simply a matter of expanding that technique. Now you'll be using the polygonal lasso tool right up here and use this just to create triangles. Now larger triangles are better than smaller triangles for this look. Sometimes you need small triangles though just because of the detail. I'm going to start right here where the wing attaches to the body right at the top. You see there's kind of a triangular shape in here already. So let's come in here and I'll do my first triangle like that. I want it for it as an actual triangle. There you go. Once you have your triangle made, go up to the filter menu, come down to blur, and then you want average right there. That's when you want to click on that. What it does is it blurs that all out until you get just an average color. Now that I've done one of those, let's just deselect that. I'm going to show you in a larger detail exactly what's happening. Let's say I wanted to do a triangular shape here in the body. I'll just make my triangle just like that. Make my selection. I stay on that one layer the whole time. So there's my selection. I'm, I'm looking for areas that are relatively even in color, relatively even in shade. So there's some lights in here, some darks, but it's all pretty close together, pretty good spot. Like in here would be a good area. Right in here would be a good area. Right there's a nice area. Down over here is a pretty good area. All those could be individual triangles. Whenever you have lines like this, you want to try to follow that line through to help with the overall look. If you have lines like our shadow line here, you want to follow that shadow line as one side of a triangle. So when you have your triangle made, you then go up here to Filter and Blur and Average. And that's what happens. It takes it and it just blurs all that colors together and gives you just a solid average of all of those colors. You can then come in and do your next triangle. Let's just make sure we're on New Selection. Click inside to deselect that. And then for your second triangle, click on one of the corners, come down to another corner, and then make your triangle connected to your first triangle. And then simply blur that next one. Now, after you've done one filter in here, the last used filter is always at the top of the filter menu. Notice here it says average, there it is, with a keyboard shortcut, Alt Control plus the F key. So I'll hold on the Alt, Control, and then tap the F key, and it applies that next filter. So you have that one keyboard shortcut to memorize, and you're all set to go. Just a matter then of continuing like this, just start at a corner, find where you want to go, and then come down to your next corner, and then back up to the start again. Make your next triangle, and then the keyboard shortcut, Control, Alt, and F, and it fills in 
that next triangle. Simply a matter of going through and doing that for the whole picture to create your low poly artwork. They want to be able to come in here and overlap your triangles just a little bit so they come right on that edge. If you have a little gap left in between, let's say you did something like this, you didn't quite catch it. Just go ahead, I'll do this again, the control, Alt F. There's my triangle. Let's say I missed this piece in here. You can just come back in and put a triangle right on top of that to, to fill that in. So I'll start up here, come down here, do a little thin triangle, just covering up that area. Same thing, same keyboard shortcut, and it fills in that spot. So if you miss it, you can just go back and fill that in. Or you can redo the whole original triangle if you want, if you don't want to have a little thin triangle. But that's the basic concept in here. And then it's just a matter of going through and doing this over and over again until you fill in the whole image. Let's just continue up here on the wing a little bit further. There we go. So I started up here, came down to about here. So there's a little triangle up on top I want to get to get that edge of the wing. Same thing, control F, there it is. Let's now come down to the bottom of this triangle here. I'll, I'll make a triangle right in here for that bit of color right there. Control Alt F. And for the wing, because of the, of the shape of the wing, it looks like I'll be doing these kind of vertical triangles. And just kind of, you know, walk my way across the image this way across the wing here and then just fill in the wing. And that's all there is to it. Again, as you can see, it's not a fast process, unfortunately. It does take a while, but it's easy to do. It's simple. Make your triangle, keyboard shortcut. Make your triangle, keyboard shortcut. Now, if you get longer areas here, you can change your triangles if you want to to a longer triangle. Like that, you can come in, you can, you know, play around with them a little bit with the shapes. I like using the triangles to follow my edges, to find the edges, and also to show the contours on the image. For instance, over here we have this line, very distinct line in here. So I want to have a triangle in here for that line. So I'm going to start oh, about here, come down over to here someplace, and up in the straight across like that, giving me that line in there. Again, the keyboard shortcut. I then need to fill these in. So I know that there's one down over here, and it comes up like that. And I can then come over here to this triangle, and then straight across the top like that. There's my next triangle. And that helps me to keep that horizontal line that I'm seeing in here. So you kind of work those in as you see them. A couple lines up in here. There's a line here. You can try to get some of that stuff in. Now, if you're working in a smaller area, like in the eye up here, you'll need to go in a lot closer. And you'll have to use smaller triangles. There's just no way around it for something like this. Now, the eye is almost a, a rectangle in here. So you could do two triangles to do the eye. And then some real thin triangles around. And then get larger as you move away. But that's the whole concept. It's easy to do, as you can see, but it does take a long time just because you have to do your triangles. And the more, you know, the tighter you get on detail, the more triangles it will take to go ahead and finish that off. Let's take a look at the finish again. There we go. So you can see in here, I was in pretty tight on that eye with just little triangles in there. And as I moved away from that down into the body, I came into larger triangles. I could use another little thin one right there to catch that little piece. But you go larger as you have larger areas and smaller as you need to work into smaller areas. Once you have that all done and you have your your basic layout done, you're going to have something where you can actually see the image in behind. You can see right here. So there's the original image. There's our polygon version on top. So on the polygon version, I would have a little bit of stuff around here after I finished my polygons. So what you want to do then is you want to make a selection clear around the whole bird going along with the angles in here of your triangles. 
I'm going to show you just the wing part of this. So grab the polygonal lasso tool again and just make a selection coming along the edges of your polygons. So you want a nice hard edge here. And in here, let's kind of cut that corner off. Again, following my triangles and not paying any attention to the stuff outside there. All I care about are, are those triangles that I made. I would then continue the selection like this, clear around the whole penguin. I'll just finish it off right down, just like that. But I'll take it clear around the whole penguin. I would then use that selection to create a layer mask, and that's what I did over here. Let's just deselect this, and I'll turn off the layer mask. Right click and disable, and let's hide our background. So there it is without the layer mask, and you see we have those edges showing in here. And with the layer mask, again, right click, enable. So it cleans up all those edges. Let me just bring our background in. So there we go. Cleans all those edges in there. All the stuff that's kind of showing in behind from the original image. That's your last final step. Just a nice selection around the whole figure, right up against all of your triangles. And then use that selection and the button right down here. Add layer mask. Click on that, and it then makes a layer mask based upon that selection that cleans up those edges for you. Again, very, very easy to do. Now the final part of this, a couple parts down here, I have this little bit down below. That is just based on this thing here. And that's simply just making a selection around that shape and filling it with white. That's all that was, all it was to it, nothing Nothing spectacular on that, just uh, shape using the polygonal lasso tool still, fill it with white, and there you go. The final bit here, the background, let's just fit on screen. There we go, fit on screen. This final background, I simply came back to the original image and I found a light blue and a dark blue out of There we go, go to the layer. Find a nice light blue in, in here somewhere. Choose OK. Go to the background, background color, and then pick a dark blue. So I have light blue, dark blue on my foreground background colors. And then simply put in a new layer. Let's hide that one. New layer. I'm going to zoom out just a touch here. There we go. Grab the gradient tool. I have it set at the default, which is foreground and background. That's where those colors come in. Foreground to background. There it is, the first one. And go up here to the top, hold the shift key down, pull straight down to the bottom, let go, and that fills in that gradient. And the gradient is just based upon those colors out of the original image. And then once I put on my little bit of snow at the bottom there, there we go. There's the final picture. So again, real easy technique, but it looks great once you have it finished. The only real problem with this technique is that it just takes a lot of time to make all those little triangles. So there you go, fun little project. One more thing about this, you want to have a subject in here that doesn't have a lot of detail. Penguins are great, there's not a lot of detail in a penguin. You know, there's not that much going on, big blocky, solid areas of color in here and big blocky solid areas of light and dark. So it's real easy to do this based upon that kind of an image. You wouldn't want to do something that's very, very complex, like say the face of a tiger with a lot of stripes in there, a lot of real thin whiskers and stuff. It'd be very, very hard to do this technique with an image like that. So you want to find a subject that's relatively simple. So it's pretty easy to do this. But there you go. That's how you do that low poly Photoshop art technique. Thank you for watching my video. I hope you found it useful. If you like this video, click on the like button below to let others know. You can click the subscribe button so you don't miss any of my videos in the future. I'm frequently uploading new training videos. Don't forget to check out my website at howtogurus.com.